guys, my name is Emily. Welcome to JC's Creek. I'm your host. Today we are talking about Season 2, Episode 8, The Retulation Hero. So, before we get into it, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's JC's Creek Podcast. Remember to follow my Instagram. That's Witter and Potter. Remember to follow my TikTok. That's Pacey and Jelly. And don't forget to put on your post notification so that way you can catch every episode on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And without further ado, let's get into this. So the first scene that we have is scene one of Pacey. So they're actually in Dawson's room for once, and they are watching a movie called Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, which I have never seen. And they're eating pizza. And Pacey is talking about how there is... He's like, mind if I have the extra pepperonis? And Dawson goes, shh, yes, for the tenth time. Which Dawson just shows that he has no patience. And Pacey is like a little child. And Pacey goes, could you pet... Could you pass me the crushed pepper? And Dawson's like, Pacey, you're driving me crazy. And Pacey's like... I'm a hungry person, and I love this moment, because it just shows them as best friends. And Dawson goes, you're an annoying person, and Pacey's like, I'm a bored person. I mean, Mr. Smith goes to Washington, Dawson? Come on, it's black and white. And Dawson goes, it's a Fran Kramer classic, which I never heard of. I never heard of that person. And Pacey says, there's a bunch of dead people in it. Everyone in this movie, they compose somewhere. It's mortal. You know... We got into this whole section at the movie store called New Releases. You should check it out. And Dawson says, Pacey, this is a timeless tale about a man faced with, he with heroic nature. And Pacey says, you know, I can't really connect with the whole ground. That's more your style, Dawson. And Dawson's like, are you insulting me? And Pacey's like, mm-hmm. I just love how Pacey's just up front with this, like, yeah, man, I'm insulting you. And he's like, you're an endangered species, my friend. Last of the dying breed. In this movie, killing you softly with the song. And Dawson goes, you are insulting me. And Pacey's like, no, I'm stating the obvious. Again, I just, I love how honest Pacey is in almost every single scene. And Pacey says, you take in stray dogs. And Dawson says, you help an old woman cross the street. You just... You just say no. You're, you are Jimmy Stewart, which should help old woman cross the street. And Dawson says, "What does that make you?" And Pacey's like, "The needless weights, born to walk in the shadow of greater men," <laughs> which makes me laugh. I don't know why that always makes me laugh. And Dawson says, "Someone having a, a, a self-esteem crisis." And Pacey says, "Ah, no, no, no." On the contrary, my friend, knowledge is power, and I am quite happy with my beloved average status. I'm not a big fan of Pacey and Dawson's and Pacey's relationship, like their friendship. However, I do love this moment a lot. And Jen appears in the window, drunk, interrupting this scene. And can we point out how comfortable Jen is walking through Dawson's window? No one's going to talk about that? Okay. And she pops onto the bed. And Pacey's like, look, look, you got company. And Dawson said, third time this week. Come on. And then moving towards Jen's feet, he says, help me out. And Pacey says, once again, hero Dawson to rescue. And he says, this isn't an exactly ideal situation. Too bad for you. And Jen sitting up says, ooh, I think I'm going to do sick. And Dawson gets, he says, get the waste back. Get the waste basket quick. I love how they have a waste basket. Like, I had one of those from the nurse's office. It's a little bit awkward. And Jen says, false alarm, and she falls back on bed. And Dawson says to Pacey, I don't know what to do with her. She's spiraling. And Pacey says, maybe you should just finish watching the gym, the watching the movie. Jim the Studer would, would know what to do. And I feel like in this, I feel like this is amazing because it's a good moment with Pacey and Dawson because it shows their friendship and for once it's not Joey and Dawson. When Joey and Dawson were together there was less scenes of Pacey and Dawson because Dawson was always self-centered and only focused on his relationship with Joey which ironically Andy and Pacey 
they weren't really self-centered and they actually paid attention which for example they didn't forget Dawson's birthday so <laughs> it's funny because Dawson eventually kind of ruins the cake for his own birthday but Pacey and Andy show up but meanwhile Dawson and Joey never showed up to his birthday anyway which is typical for high schoolers to focus on the relationship, but the moment that Joey and Dawson are done for real from the last episode, Dawson and Pacey are back together, which I always find amazing because I'm like, I feel like that's just most typical teenager friends. Like, they don't really focus on each other for a while, and finally they're just back together. The second scene is scene two of Pacey, and it cuts to Pacey in the counseling office. And the counselor says, well, Pacey, grade point average 1.7, currently failing biology, which can I just say, biology is a little bit hard, and U.S. history, I had to take biology in, like, ninth grade. I was sort of criminal offense interest, none, typically, disruption of class, has difficult difficulties with tests requiring number two pencils, let's see, career absent test, well, I didn't realize it was possible to fail in the attitude test. This shows that you are absolutely zero career objection. Congratulations. Most playfully with your uh, uh, academic work record can't walk upright. Which, I feel like their school didn't do anything to help Pacey. to just continue making fun of him. And they just kind of called it out like, you are stupid. That's basically what the like, counselor said. And the counselor is meant to help him, and he didn't help him. And Pacey said, what are my options? And the counselor says, summer school followed by re return and engagement in your sophomore year. And by some miracle, you make it to graduation, a life lesson of lectures, until welfare remains kicks in, well, no one. Now, I'm really disappointed in you, Pacey. Again, he does not help him. Like, they didn't know what was going on in Pacey's life, and I'm sure Pacey already gets enough lectures from his dad, and now he goes to school, and the counselor, the guidance counselor that was supposed to guide him, says that you don't have academics for college. Like, he's not supposed to have that. He's in 10th grade. Like, leave him alone. I didn't know what I was doing in 10th grade. I still don't know what you're doing. I heard someone say the other day, you're not supposed to know what you're doing for a very long time. And even then, life changes. And the fact that they were kind of predicting that Pacey wouldn't make the graduation honestly makes me sad again. Because why are they saying that to a 10th grader? Why are they saying that? I get that they were trying to scare them, but that just makes them not want to work as hard because he's already failing at home and he's failing at school. What is the purpose in this? Like, that's what he's going to think about. The first thing we see of Joey is Joey seeing Dawson walking, like, rushing to Joey. And Dawson says, Joey, Joey, wait up. Joey, we want. And Joey is really confused on her face because what happened to that whole episode where they were talking about giving each other space? That, yeah, that's not going to happen. And Dawson says, the, the Boston Fail Festival. We won the junior prize for the best short film in the junior division. And Joey's so happy. And she goes, oh my god. And Dawson says, listen to this. The club where it's sent up on her on our horror gene shows a profound understanding of traditional Hollywood fantasies and turns them upside down in the in an entirely refreshing and an, inter in an entertaining way. And Joey is more excited for Dawson than anything. And Joey for Dawson like continues this and says that they won a 200, like 2,000, 2,500 money reward and he's holding up the check and he shows her. And he then says, we're all, we're already been pre-accepted in the winner, the winner winner shop, and Joey looks up and smiles again, but this time like a forced smile, and she goes, "We?" And Dawson says, "Yeah, I mean, I know, I understand. We said we give each other space, and I totally respect that." No, he doesn't. Obviously, he does not respect that if he just continues to push her, and he says, "But I was wondering, uh, I mean, hoping that." You would still be per perceived. Think about it. 
We could rent equipment, say goodbye to the holiday lamp lighting and shopping cart stalls. I mean, if we move fast, we could get finished by summer. Maybe travel with it, go to festivals. And Joey says, Dawson, I'm really sorry, but I don't think I could do that. I mean, I don't think I have time right now. I mean, I signed, just signed up for some art classes. And between work and school, Dawson says, but we make such a good team. No, 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 no. You make a good team, Joey. Joey isn't involved in this. And Joey nods her head, but she still says, like, firm to what she just said. And Dawson says, okay, no, I understand. And Joey says, listen, I mean, this is amazing. I mean, you should be through. The second scene that we see is of Joey. And Dawson walks down the hall, and Joey just stands there, sad, knowing that she disappointed him. And then she taps a hand, and then a hand is, like, on his shoulder. So Dawson's, like, walking away, and she's just staring at him. And Jack's, like, Jack, when she turns around, he says, Joey, you got a sec? And Joey says, actually, I'm a little late for second period. And Jack goes, um, look, I really like to make things right between us. It takes a second, okay? It was a full moon. I know there's no excuse, but I'm really sorry. Just tell me what I can do to get our friendship back on track because this whole silent treatment thing is killing me. I love how Jack respects Joey's face and it's pretty obvious in here that he just wants her to forgive her, like forgive him. However, Joey obviously doesn't seem sure about this by saying when she says, No, I just may I just had a lot on my mind lately and Jack says, Oh, so you're not mad at me? And Joey says, No, actually I think you had had it right the night of the dance. More than anything, I guess I was mad at myself. I just realized that Jack was not in the last episode. Where was he? I think he was just giving her space. But wasn't he in that class? Anyway. Um, Jack's, Joey says, and then Jack says, oh well, get over it already. This whole line of personal charm thing just kind of wrinkles up on your forehead. And they laugh. And Jack says, besides that, I miss hanging out with you. And Joey says, gotta go, Jack. And Jack says, see ya. And Joey leaves and Jack smiles and, and and they run off to the next class. So like I said, Jack wanted to forgive Joey to forgive him. However, Joey wasn't sure how she felt about it because she was struggling to know, like knowing that she ruined the relationship with Dawson was making it hard to be friends with Jack because she told Dawson that she needed space, but she didn't want him to like get all jealous and mad when she was running around with Jack, even though they were just friends. So the third scene that we see of Pacey is when Pacey and Andy are in the lunch line. And Pacey says, then he tells me that I have no future that involves the fast food industry. Which, I mean, he kind of said that, but not really. And Andy says, and he's called a guidance counselor. That's what I was saying. Andy agrees with me on this. And Pacey says, yeah, among other things. And Annie says, just because a student doesn't fit in some cookie-cutter mold that public sy school system de deems acceptance, they're ready to write them off. I mean, Einstein fell second grade, and not because he was stupid, but because he was bored. An uncomplaining of inferior public school system failed to recognize it. You know, they rather just dismiss someone who's obvious and needed some guidance rather than reach out to him. I mean, if someone's along the way to had just took two seconds to notice and care, they would have noticed you need some recuse, recuse, and not rescue, not recuse. And the whole cafeteria is watching Andy now, and Pacey says, Lady and gentlemen, Andy with feet, and they all clap. And Andy is just the opposite of Pacey, and Pace, I love how Pacey just reacts to his whole rant, like, that's her. She said that. And it's just proof that Andy really cares about Pacey. And how much she cares about him really shows. Because she's like, you deserve more. That's basically what she was saying through the whole thing. You deserve more. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be everything. And they're not giving you that. And I, they need to so see that. The next that. scene of Pacey is scene four. Where it cuts to Pacey and Andy. And Andy says, this isn't funny, Pacey. It's just more... And, and 
entire future is on the line here, and I think you should be more nervous. I mean, you're not so nervous. You're making me nervous. And Pacey says, now that's all parentheses of infants has been dully documented. I kind of feel like weights have been taken off, you know? And Annie says, if that's the way you perceive yourself, then that's the way people are going to look at you. If you act like a joke, people are going to treat you like one. And Pacey says, you figured, you finally figured it out. I'm not Luke Skywalker. I'm not even Luke Perry. There's no hero here. And Andy says, I am a joke. Or Pacey says, Andy, I'm a joke. And Andy says, I'm not coming to your pity party. You know I don't think you're a joke, Pacey. I love how Andy says that. Like, I feel like she's the first girl or the first person to say that on the show that you're not a joke. And Pacey says, but I think it's too late. I spend so too long being a screw up. I'm kind of in the past of presumption point of no return. And Andy says, well, change your course, break the chain. Anyone can reinvent themselves. I mean, it's America. Madonna does it every week. And Pacey says, but I don't know how. I don't know where to start. And he says, try starting inside. I mean, anyone can change their fate. Heroes can make are made, not born. And Pacey stares at her and stare and smiles at her thoughtfully. I feel like Andy, again, is the first one to ever really say this. But I feel like she says it because she truly means it. Not because she's trying to be nice. And not because she's just trying to show that she cares about him. But truly saying this because she wants him to understand that, hey, like, no matter what, you are something. You are worth something. You're not what the guidance counselor says. You are something else. And this is what I'm trying to say to you. And I will forever love that about that we have is scene four of Joey where Jack and Joey are in the lunch line. And Jack says, well, to Shay Cafeteria, one of our specials tonight is Jeb, well, I can't say what he just said. And I don't know what language that was. And he, he says, with the side of baby carrots on the on the bed of spear, spear lettuce, which I highly recommend. Now we have some other special tonight, which I include some red reddish yellow stuff down there and of course we have their green Jonathan dessert which is highly and then he smells it suspicious nature which just describes schooled lunch food in a perfect way go Jack go little poster and then Jack Joey laughs and Jack says hey what are you doing tonight and Joey says probably just the usual you know have my driver pick me up at eight and I go for a massage before my cater dinner upon my yacht. And then I may chat, jet over to Paris to see my ranch expertise at Loaf. And Jack's like, actually, that exhibit was moved to the blank last week. However, I'm pretty sure I could get his reputation, say, eight abilities. And Joey just looks completely confused at him, not realizing that he just asked her on a date. And Jack says, you know, Billy, that hot dog thing's down at Durf's. And Joey's like, you mean like a date? And Jack's like, no, 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 of course not. It's like a dat. And Joey's like, a dat. I love how he just tries to cover that he just asked her out on a date because he kind of looks embarrassed. And Jack says, yeah, you know, like the E of the date, you go on a dat. And Joey's like, and what do people do on dats? And Jack's like, well... There's no really code for a contract. Uh, elegance is definitely optional. We could do make up our own rules, and all requirement is having a great time. Oh, and don't worry, I checked the lunar calendar. No full moons for weeks, and they laugh. I love how Jack respects her in a lot of ways, but he also like kind of makes it fun. And when he knew that she was uncomfortable, he like told her like, oh, it's not a date, it's a dat. And he just made it all up. And now they're just kind of that light and friendly. And that was my favorite thing. And I just knew that Dawson would never do that. Dawson would never. And Joey says, you know, Jack, you certainly have, you ha do have a certain charm. And Jack smiles. And Joey says, but don't worry. I'm not going to ignore it and hang out with you. I'm going to ignore it and hang out with you anyway. And Jack smiles and he says, see ya. I feel like Jack wanted to be there with Joey while Joey didn't want to hurt Jack. This caused a problem with both of their feelings because it made it hard to work with them both. Joey didn't want to hurt Jack or Joey, which 
which caused it to be hard to open up to Jack, which caused Jack to be very, very nervous because he looked so nervous throughout this whole scene, which Jack looks nervous throughout this whole season, but still. So the next scene that we have is scene five of Pacey and Jack goes and sits down with Andy and Pacey and Andy goes, hey Jack. And Jack's like, I have a date with Joey. And Joey just stares at him like, why are you telling me this? And Andy goes, that's great. And Jack's like, yeah. And Andy looks at Pacey and she goes, what? And Jack's like, uh, Pace, I'm sorry. I know you're, I know you're a friend of Dawson's. And Pacey says, yes, man, it's okay. Just leave me out of it, all right? And Jack goes, so look, Andy, I know you, I know it's my night with mom. So I don't, so if you don't want to get out, and Andy's like, no, 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 I have to stay in and study anyways. And Pacey's like, we have to study in, remember? And Andy's like, right, I can't believe I've forgotten. Jack, don't worry, I mean, sh I mean, she's not entirely your responsibility. There's two of us. Besides, what, what's the new medication on? She's doing a lot better. And Pacey, I mean, Jack says, Andy, come on. Mom pulled another sideburns last week. Let's be honest with each other. And Andy says, look, just go out with Joey, okay? Everything's under control. I got it on him to go. Pacey, I feel like he didn't want to ruin his friendship with Dawson because it would be like talking behind his best friend's back. However, I feel like he just didn't want to be in the middle of everything. Like, he just never wants to be in the middle of everything. He's like, don't, don't put me in that. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's like him the whole entire show. So the next scene that we have is scene five of Joey and it cuts to Joey's house and she's getting ready and she sees Dawson at the front door and she goes, Dawson, um, what are you doing here? And and Dawson says, um, this is for you. And he hands her a small envelope and Joey's like, I can't accept this. This is your movie. And Dawson says, Joe, I want you to have it. What happened to Pacey? Shouldn't Pacey get some of it? Because this is the sea creature movie that we've seen in season one, episode one. So, like, shouldn't Pacey get some involvement with it? But okay. And he, Joey says, well, I could use the money. I mean, thank you. Because he tells her that he wants her to be happy. And Dawson says, I believe in you, Joey. I always have. And now you have it. <laughs> there are some things that just Pacey does not believe her in. Like the art thing, like he called it a hobby. Obviously, you do not believe in her if you're calling it a hobby, sir. And and Dawson asks if she's going somewhere. And Joey says, no, just hang out with a friend. And Dawson says, oh, okay, I guess I'll see you around. And Joey says, okay. And Dawson says, okay. And Joey calls his name when he's walking away. And he turns around and says, yeah. And Joey says, do you think things could get back to normal between us? Could we be friends again? And Dawson says, I like that. And Joey says, good. Okay. And Dawson turns to leave and Joey says, and you know, um, whatever kind of movie you decide to make, I know it's going to be great. It's a movie about you. <laughs> That's my response to that, Joey. It's literally a movie about you. And Dawson says, I've been thinking of doing a love story. You know, boy meets girl, boy gets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl back. And Joey smiles and says, Dawson, because she already knew where this was going. And Dawson says, you know me, I'm a sucker for happy endings. And Joey says, yeah. And Dawson says, so. And Joey says, well, thank you. And Dawson says, yeah. And he turns around and his face falls when he sees Jack walking up. And Jack says, hey. And Dawson kind of pauses and says, hey, back. Which we know that Dawson does not like this idea of Joey and Jack going back together when he just agreed to being friends with them too. And Joey closes her eyes and then smiles and Joey says, hey, and Jack says, hey. And Joey says, everything fine? Which you can tell that Jack's kind of nervous about Dawson. And he says, yeah, fine, just say hi. And Joey says, maybe we should go inside. And Jack says, sure. And Joey looks back towards Dawson who is walking on the dock. I feel like Dawson handed Joey the check just to make up and show his loyalty, but in my eyes, it's a little bit controlling. Like, yeah, I respect your space, but here's something you will have nothing to do with. Then Jack comes and Joey feels like she has to hide it from Dawson, when really it's none of Dawson's business. And when we, like, I generally think that because, like, why are you making such a big deal already? Like, you can just, it was like silent. 
through this whole scene, but you can just tell, like, both of them didn't want to talk to each other. And it was very awkward because Dawson was the one who made it awkward. The next scene that we have is scene six of Pacey, and Annie's mom says, Pacey, hello, nice to see you. And Andy rushes out when she hears Pacey is here at the front door. And Andy says, okay, we're going to be upstairs studying if you need anything, okay, mom? And Andy's mom said, would you kids like something to eat? I could make you a sandwich. And Pacey says, no thanks, I just ate. And Andy says, what are you studying? And Pacey says, tonight's double feature includes U.S. history and biology. And Andy's mom says, if Tim were, was here, he could get you some help. U.S. history was Tim, one of Tim's favorite subjects. And Andy's a little bit hesitant, like, oh crap, here we go. And she says, okay, and they go inside. And Pacey says, I thought you said your mom was getting better. And Andy says, she is. She just slips sometimes. And Pacey says, well, I don't mean to be insistent, it's Andy, but she talks about your brother like he's still alive. And Andy says, she, well, she has her good days and her bad days. And Pacey says, and what day is this? And Andy says, Pacey. And he apologized. They go upstairs and they go to Andy's room where Pacey walks in to the prize and the trophies that Andy has collected over the years. And Pacey says, you know, the only thing I ever won was out, came out of a cereal box, which is, again, kind of proves Pacey's academics and all that kind of stuff, but it kind of proves how things kind of get out of hand. And he says, how do you do this? I know you have a preppy personality, but my God, Andy, on top of everything, you take care of your family and you still have time, have time to rescue a guy like me. Aren't you tired? I feel like Pacey is, like, getting amazed by Andy keeping up with her mom in school. But we can see Andy is, like, the orderly type. And when, like, it's messy, she focuses on the things that she can control. Because she says, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, okay? Let's get started. Like, she just ignores it completely because she knows, like, the reason why she does all this stuff is to get things in order. To do all these things, she had to be the correct person to do this. She had to put things in order. She has to make her life, like, all A's and all B's, maybe not even B's, because she needs to make her life perfect in school while her home life is messy. And that's why she does everything that she does, because, yeah, Pacey's kind of judging her, but Annie knows why she's like this. And I feel like this kind of helps people, Pacey, to see from different point of views, because he was judging her at first. Like, he didn't know what she was like and why she was this, like, person who wanted to do her project with visiting a bunch of homes, even though it was an economics project. Like, he wanted to really understand that and now he does because he understands why her mom is the way that she is and her mom kind of made her this kind of person in a lot of ways but I also feel like it's with Tim's death and her dad's leaving that really made Andy more like this and plus her anxiety. So the sixth scene we see of Joey is when they're at the picnic, uh, Jack and Joey, and there is lightning flash flashing and Joey says whoa and Jack says heat lightning you know I almost got hit by lightning once when I was a kid we were playing very stuck in the park and I froze and crack I mean I could smell the ground burn and I just I just love how Nelson always I mean Jack always talks about like his past but not really like in like a snarky way he just kind of says it like in like a meaningful way and Joey says, oh my god, did you freak? And Jack says, I got fascinated. Joey's like, with lightning? And Jack's like, lightning's amazing. It's the opposite charges attracting into the force that just gets so great that the air just breaks down. It's the natural version of art, performing its arts. And Joey says, Jack, how do you do all these things that normal people don't? And you know that normal people do. And Jack says, you don't get bored and watch the weather channel? Which, me too, Jack. I remember one time, this is kind of a little bit personal, but I went to therapy for a while, and there was, like, a television playing, and it was always on the weather channel, so I would just sit there for, like, 20 minutes waiting for my therapist and just watch the weather channel, <laughs> and there was fishes, so I would watch the fish, too. I think I was probably, like, 12, and Joey says, 
No, but we are kid. When we are kids, Dawson and I tried to react to Ben Franklin's experiments with the key, tighten the key. We almost got electrocuted ourselves and Jack goes, you and Dawson, and Joey realized that she messed up, and she goes, I'm sorry, I don't know why I brought him up, it's just we know each other for such a long time, and Jack goes, it's okay, I understand, you guys have history, which every boy can cannot compare to Pacey, but every boy cannot compare to Dawson because there's history involved, and he writes a whole television show about that, so, and Joey says, you have to understand Dawson. I mean, life is a movie to him. And in his movie, the hero always punches the guy, bad guy out. I mean, not that you're a bad guy. It's just, and Jack says he was upset. And Joey says, yeah. Jack says, I'm not, I'm sure I would be too if I let you slip through my fingers. And Joey says, I saw the look he gave you outside tonight. And Jack says, yeah, you were right about the movie thing. He made, he made me feel upset like I was in the middle of the western and he was John Wyatt challenging me to a duet at sunset but I would put up for the challenge though some things are worth fighting for and there's more lightning and Joey says god that's so cool so Jack knows how Dawson is feeling because he knows that if he ever lost Joey he would probably feel the same way but Joey knows that it's like a movie in Dawson's eyes. Like, things happen where the bad guys get punished and all this different kind of stuff. And to Jack, it's just a jealous boyfriend. But to Joey, it's a boy who can't get over his reality. Like, he can't get over the fact that things happen and life happens. Scene 7 of Pacey is when they're when Andy and Pacey are studying. And she's like, after you read through that chapter, you want to go back and highlight all the important passage, which... I feel like this is like every second grade English class, if you know what I'm saying. And she's like, go through the importance or, or given standard test. And Pacey's like, well, how do you know it's important? If it's not important, why do you write it down? Whose job is it? Who's right, right to decide what passages are important enough for the flaws yellow fit to marker? And it is like, you're giving me a headache. I need a break. And... She sits on her bed and the phone rings and it's the store employee who is telling her that her mom is in the store again and she could be there in five minutes so please don't call the police. And Pacey looks very concerned at Andy and he asks Andy what's wrong and Andy says it's my mother. She's at Molly Market again and they go to the market and it cuts to the market and Andy says hi. And the employee says, I didn't call the cops because you and your brother are really nice. I do feel sorry for you, but this is the third time. And Andy says, I know. And the employee says, but if you can't get her out here, and Andy says, I know, I know, thank you. And the employee says, I hope I don't have to tell you this is really bad for my business. And Andy says, my, Andy's mom says, my husband really takes care of things. She's talking to a whole group of people, by the way. And she says, you should call my husband. He takes care of things, and Andy walks up to Andy's mom, and she says, let's go home. And Andy's mom says, I can't. I'm sorry, honey. I can't go home. I'm sorry. And Andy says, please, let's just go home, okay? And Andy's mom says, no, I can't. And Andy's, Andy says, mom, stop it, please. And Andy's mom says, it's over. It's all gone. Which, poor, poor. I feel bad for Andy's mom throughout this whole episode. And Pacey walks up and says, Hey, Mrs. Smithy, remember me, Pacey? And Andy's mom's like, Pacey. And Pacey says, yeah, it's me. What are you doing here? Picking up some groceries? And he just acts all casual. And Andy's mom says, I don't know. I don't know. And Pacey's like, don't worry. Just, let me pick out a couple things. Um, hey, they got marshmallows. It's a food group in its own. And Andy's mom says, you don't want that. I have some turkey and roast beef in the fridge. And Pacey's like, you know what sounds good to me? Triple Decker Club sandwich. Will you make me a sandwich, Mrs. Smithy? And Andy's mom says, Yes, I can make you a sandwich, Pacey. And Pacey says, Excellent. And you, Mrs. Smithy, are my savior. Come on. And they walk out the store. So I feel like Pacey really is like his whole character show because he didn't run away when this happened, like typical boys would probably do. A lot of the times we were scared of our family and who they are when we first meet that person. We're scared of showing our family because it's like showing your true colors, like what's happening and all this different kind of stuff. And 
if you show your true colors, especially to a person you like, sometimes you fear that they'll run away. However, Pacey in this moment stepped in. He loved and cared for Joey, for Andy's mom, and even Jack when we see this later. And I think it was mostly because he he loved those two people, but he mostly loved Andy, and it showed so much when he did that. It's not like he ran and did the same because he did the same thing with Joey. Like, he stepped in with B&B, &B and he was selfless, and that's just Pacey's personality. He drove her in season one in episode 13, and he let her see her dad, even though her, his dad arrested her dad, Joey's dad. And I feel like that's just the selfish person that he is, and he was loving Joey just like he loved Andy in this uh, scene. Scene seven of Joey, where it cuts to Joey and Jack, where Joey says, well, Jack McPhee, that was unique evening. And Jack says, unique, weird, or unique, good. And Joey says, unique, fun. So, um, I guess I should get in this hide. And then they kiss. And it was not a full moon, you guys. And Jack goes, you're not gonna stop speaking to me, are you? And Joey says, I think you're... I think you're safe, crescent mood. And Jack says, so uh, maybe we can hang out again? And Joey says, yeah, that's a possibility. Unless, of course, I get engrossed in the weather channel, which isn't likely. And Jack says, don't even try. And Joey says, hey, Jack. And Jack says, yeah. And Joey said, I had a really nice evening tonight. I really had a nice time tonight. And Jack says, thanks. And they say, see ya. I love the scene because it was just one of those moments where you can tell Jack was a complete different person than what Joey's type is used to. So Joey's type is Dawson. And when we can see Joey and Jack, Jack is so polite in this scene. Like, he, he showed her a good evening. It wasn't that. But the evening ended with a kiss. And and the dad was good for them. So, code word for date, but it was a date without an E. And I love that so much for them. So, the next scene is scene eight of Pacey, and it cuts to Pacey and Andy. And Pacey says, she's out like a light, huh? Because Andy walks in their bed in the house now. And Andy says, yeah, she goes way up and then crashes. And Pacey says, are you going to be all right, Andy? I'm worried about you. And Andy says, look look at you taking care of my family and then saving me don't you see you just proved yourself wrong pacey you can do anything you want what you did for me tonight was so, was nothing short of his back his back here. i'm proud of you and this proves that andy believes in him obviously there was other people who believe in him but this was the first time that we really see in this like season one and season two that someone believes in him and he's just he was told that he was not good enough by the guidance counselor, and here he is later getting told that he was good enough by his love interest. And I feel like he laughed at this because he did, but he didn't know that it really meant a lot to him. And Andy said, what's so funny? And Pacey says, I'm not really used to hearing those words, I'm proud of you, at least not when they're directed to me. Um, and he tells her to come on, and Andy says, where are we going? And Pacey says, upstairs to your bedroom. And Andy says, oh, really? What do you have in mind? She's like, you can tell what Andy has in mind when he says that. And Pacey's like, what do you think? And Andy says, Pacey. And Pacey's like, I still got three chapters to read. Which, I love that scene so much, because it's obvious that Andy really, really likes Pacey. And she encourages him in this scene. She loves him in this scene. And he loves her back in all of this. The quick scenes. last scene that we have is scene A to Pacey. And there's literally not even five seconds of this scene. Where it's basically Joey climbs through Dawson's window. And she goes, hey Dawson. And then she realizes that he isn't even in there. So she sits on the bed and looks at his jaw stuffed animal. Which we know in season one was a big thing. And she smiles, and it falls, and she signs, and she climbs back down the window. We can tell that Joey wants to be with Dawson, but she went to someone else who was, who was easy. Because I feel like Dawson was an easy character. And after she kissed Jack, she went straight to Dawson. But obviously, she probably thought it was going to be easy like Jack, where they can just, like, be friends again. 
but she just ran away from her problem. Like, she went to Jack the during that full moon. She kissed him. Whether it was Jack's fault or not, she still kissed him and she ran away from her problems. We talked about this a couple episodes back that Joey goes to Dawson because she feels like she feels like he's easy. And I feel like obviously she didn't go and say that she'll never talk to Jack again, but I feel like she went back into Dawson's bedroom thinking that it was gonna be easy again and then I feel like she was disappointed because she never got to see Dawson. And she struggles with that a lot and now this kind of proves it because she walks in there and she's just disappointed when she does not see him. And I feel like it was a good thing that he wasn't in there because if he was in there, it would be the same thing all over again. And there, she just needed a change. She needed a new environment. So my main thoughts of these episodes is one, Pacey was a complete gentleman to Andy and Andy's mom. He takes care of Andy because they, it shows big time on how much he actually loves her. However, he's worried about Andy and we could tell in the last scene that he cares and loves her more and more each episode. So the second point that I want to say is Joey wants to act like, like she's big with Jack because she is sad that she lost Dawson. And throughout this episode we could see how she struggles with not talking to Dawson or about Dawson. And she realized that that's her childhood and she needs to get past it because Dawson was history and continues to be history throughout the show. And it sucks for her, but she need, she kind of learns to get over him each episode, which she kind of does bad at the end of season two, but we'll get into that. So, if you like this episode, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel where I will be posting every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to follow my Instagram, Twitter, and Potter, and my TikTok, Pacey and Joey. And I'll catch you next time. Bye, guys.